This is gonna have me hurting in all kinds of ways. Get Z measuring tape! Hey friends, welcome back to the shop for another Herald episode. Today, we're gonna tackle the uh, front suspension. Now that we've done the rear, we gotta get rid of that Carolina squat and make sure that we're in perfect alignment front and back, which means a lot of really heavy lifting to get this old heavy steel out from the front. It's gonna be fun. Let's get into it. Art gave me the measuring tape again. Let's get a before measurement on our front suspension before we drop it a bit. We are at 17 inches. Okay. So we gotta go a little lower. Just a little lower. Just a little lower. Drop it. Low, low, <laughs> low. Where did the Miller light come from? Uh, no idea. Actually, nope. So someone at some point, while they were trying to refresh all the suspension and frame and everything to make it look nice, they also thought that it was a great idea to paint over threads, paint over all the rubber boots, to include painting over grease and gunk and grime. Why not? Just paint it all. Well, clearly that's not good and it really takes away from the life and the functionality of these. So while we're taking all of this off, we're going to go ahead and replace the inner and outer tie rods, make sure that all of our greased fittings and rubber boots are the way they're supposed to be and hopefully last a while and actually do what they're supposed to do. So let's go ahead and do that next. Another boot. It's all the grease is hard as a rock painted over. Just no good inside. Another piece that we're going to actually get rid of and, and do better on are these sleeves right here. They basically just clamp on over the threads. I'm not a fan of that. So we're going to upgrade these to something a little bit better that actually thread onto both of the tie rods. Get rid of this. Now lift up the upper control arm. Okay. And you can let your 
your spindle down. All right, that's, that's fine right there. All right, now I need you to move out of the way for me. Rusty, rusty. All right. I got all the shims stacked up like dimes. And of course, like everything else, it's all painted over. Three, another big washer. <laughs> throwing shims like little throwing stars. Little throwing stars. All right, now that we've got all the suspension off, the next part is another hard one compared to everything else because we have to do cutting and we got to go through more of these devilish rivets that are just hard as hell. We have to take this whole plate off and then replace it with the new plate that will end up going in its place. So, this is gonna be a two-person job. I've gotta get inside the frame to hold the other side of these bolts while Dana works the ratchet on the outside. Whee! Whee! Same one? Yep. Yay! Yay! One bolt! One! All right, getting this perch off is a major pain in the ass. Uh, two things that makes it that way. These rivets that go through from the bottom up into that perch, our itch, air chisel just is not strong enough to be able to get those off. So a combination of the torch and the chisel was able to make it happen. The downside is on the back side of this perch there are two uh, welded in cage nuts and the first one came out okay the second one 
we could not get leverage to loosen it. One is we have our headers in and the headers really restricted anything to be able to get within the frame and gain leverage. So fortunately for this side, I just took the torch and melted everything until I was able to beat it off with the hammer. We are not going to be able to do that on the passenger side because of the fuel lines. So that's going to require us to unfortunately take off the headers on the passenger side to give us the leverage we need. And But thank God this step is done. Now we're going to end up cleaning this up before we do the next step of drilling the holes. All right, with the new perches, we'll line up all the stock holes and then trace out this area that we have to cut out for the new center. Unbolting the headers was a fail. It did not work. Although we could start one bolt, uh, it just was not moving enough. So we did end up having to torch these. Even after torching, you see these rivets are still there. Now I gotta beat it out with a sledgehammer to get the damn things out. Note, we did not disconnect the fuel lines. We were extremely careful and did not keep the heat on for very long. Yeah, very good point. We melted it, let it cool down. Melted it, let it cool down. So we tried to be as smart as we possibly could while being foolish. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, you can at least say that I'm stubborn and determined. Hole saw did not work. Uh, with that hole in the middle, there was no way for it to actually sit still. So that didn't work. Next is we're going to go back to the torch and see if we can cut this out. But once you start going on the torch, you really can't see where your line is. So I cut out this little template here, the size, bolted it down to the cross member. So now I should be able to follow this around and hopefully get somewhat of a good cut. We will see. Damn, that worked pretty freaking good for as rudimentary as that is. All right, now time to clean it up. That actually turned out pretty damn good for the first time. Had my template not melted, that would have been almost perfect. Now, mask it off and paint it. Okay, driver's side is now cut. I tell you, this one took a lot of extra work. I, I just could not get the mixture right with the acetylene and, and oxygen, so it fought me. But, finally done. Now time to go ahead and mask this one up and paint it. Okay, we are back. So I hit all the raw metal with the Eastwood Rust Encapsulator Plus. Dana has done a killer job of masking everything off. And now we'll go ahead and tackle the last bit of it with the Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black. All right, we're back. 
paint's dried up, we're ready to go ahead and get this hardware on. One thing that I would wish that CPP did better of is actually supply the full instructions with these kits. With individual pieces, like the upper and lower control arms, they provide a little instruction sheet, but not with the full kit. So you get bags of bolts, and you get several brackets with no clue on what goes to where. And when there are no full videos online or instructions with pictures telling you what, then you're going to kind of have to figure it out. Now, I did contact CPP, told them that I needed instructions for this kit, and they were not in their uh, full summary page with instructions for everything. So uh, they were very, very quick to email me these which incredibly thankful for. However, even these did not tell me which bolts. And in this kit, you get all of these. So you just gotta figure it out by yourself. So I'm hoping to alleviate that with this episode in case anybody else is looking to install this so you know exactly which bolts go to where. To include the brackets, because you got these brackets, you got those brackets, and you, you don't really know unless you have the instructions. So let's get into this now. All right, very first piece is to get our 90 degree bracket on top. We're gonna to align it with the four holes that the original rivets were in. Then you have this bracket here that will actually hold the spring into place. This is going to go underneath and you're gonna line it up with those same holes. Spin it around until we get that right. The bolts in the kit are these that actually work with this next piece are these 9 16 They are the only ones that actually come with the nuts as well. These will bolt together, sandwich everything up. I've got one in here for now just to hold these two together because before we put all the rest of them in, we actually have to bolt on these coilover hangers at the very top, just like this, using the same hardware. You'll be able to figure out these two brackets that are different. And they're only going to line up with the holes one way. All right, we've got our four bolts down. Both our perches are set. The coilover hanger is on. Now, with these bolt holes that we have to drive through, CPP says that Th all three of these should line up. Uh, top and bottom here do a little bit. Uh, these look actually really good. This one off just a little bit so we have to clean this one up. This is the only one that we have to drill fresh into the frame. So let's go ahead and get that done now. All right, now that we've got our full four holes lined up and drilled, we're going to use our four five-eighths inch bolts. These do not have any nuts on them because these brackets will actually go inside the frame. Then this will actually get bolted up to here. These bolts will all go into there. And then we'll jump to the next step.
And unless you're very, very good, which clearly I am not, you need an additional set of hands for this. So in comes Dana. Okay, so while we were putting those brackets on for the upper control arms, what I didn't catch, because it's really not very obvious when you just pull them out of a plastic bag, but these brackets are actually a little bit, one is a little bit longer than the other. So let's show you right there. So the short bracket actually goes on the top and the longer on the bottom. Otherwise, things just won't line up. Heh <laughs> heh, <laughs> yeah. Another reason to have another set of eyes on it. Which one do you want me to start with? We'll start with the one that you don't like. It's perfect. It's right there in the hole. Yee. Am I? In the first shot. <laughs> Driver's side's now done. Time to go ahead and wrap up passenger side. All right, we're finally moving into the shiny parts. Upper control arm, your two holes here. We're gonna be using two of our remaining three bolts. These do not have any nuts on them. These are three quarter inch. And as I was looking at this, I realized that I had another moment of ignorance. If you recall earlier in the episode, we were pulling all the shims off and to my inexperience, I did not know how important those were and we should have actually kept an eye on how many we had on each of those because we're going to need to put them back on in order to keep it close to where it was. So gonna follow advice of others and just put some on and then save the others for when we get to the alignment shop so they can go ahead and work those in as they see fit. Our little baggie on there has the cotter pin for the ball joint and the zerk fitting. So we'll screw that on in. All right, lower control arms. If your prior U-bolts were actually good, they suggest you reusing those because the kit does not come with new ones. Now clearly you saw me cut ours off because there was no way I could get those bolts off without it. So AutoZone, a new pair of U-bolts and the nuts for $10. Great price. All right, moving on to the coilovers now. Very first step is to put in our crush washer. With these coilovers, you have a bag of four. They vary in thicknesses depending upon your application, your bolts. So, for this one, and the best thing to do is just Take the bolt that you're going to end up using and have it a really good fit. So we've got this one here that's a good thickness. I think this is the thickest one that they have out of the four. Now you have to press this inside. All right, there we go. All right, with the coilovers, the hardware kit that you have is the mounting rod that will have to get added into the bottom of the coilover. Snap rings that will go on after we get this pressed in. 
and then hardware to mount them to the lower control arms. Certainly this is where a vise and a press is going to really, really help out. You'll push it through just enough to where you still have the grooves for the snap rings on both sides. All right, one on. Greatest fears when these damn things pop off of the snap ring tool and fly at the speed of sound to some unknown crevice in your shop or garage. Okay, all set. All right, now that we have our coilover assembled from our mounting points, CPP makes it very clear through a bright yellow piece of paper in the box that you must put anti-seize on these threads in order to avoid voiding your warranty because the lock nuts that we're going to put it on here they can jack those threads up if we don't use it so we're going to go ahead and put this on here also in the instructions yeah they make it very clear in the instructions as well so it is not to be missed uh, we're just going to end up covering half of the coilover threads because that's where the spring mount and the lock nut will actually be. All right, from here we're going to put our lock nut on. The raised portion will go up. All right, next is our spring mount once again raised going up now if you have this kit this kit comes with the additional thrust uh, pieces with your rolling washer as well as regular washers cpp recommends that you do both washers and both sides of those washers so that's what we're going to end up doing next we'll set this down out of the way put some of this nice chocolate pudding on here <laughs> yep All right, next we will go ahead and get it mounted. Yeah, get it mounted. All right, so we put our spring on the coil over. I'm going to raise it, make sure to get this coil over with an extra hand <laughs> you got to move the spring while holding the coil over while moving the lower control arm while getting the spring in the spring pocket a lot of holding okay now now we're going to need to jack up the lower control arm to compress the spring in order to... Yeah, you have to do right. jack. All right, go ahead. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let go of my spring and everything else moved. Okay. 
You good now? I think so. Up? Oh. Yep. Time for some spindles. All right, now from factory, the lower control arm ball joint is not greased. So grab your hand dandy grease gun and look for the little nipple on the bottom, pop it on and fill it up. All right, spindle time. Ball joints are a little bit tight. Gotta, gotta work that lube in. Gotta work it in. Am I still good? Yep. All right, you're off now. All right. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and tighten up these castle nuts, get the cotter pins in, and then get ready to put the hubs back on. We'll reverse everything that we did at the very beginning. All right, before we put our rotors, the rest of the braking system back on, we have to put on these caliper adjustment brackets. These will actually go on the inside of your drop spindle just like this. All right, bracket going like this. Your bolts will go through and then thread into the spindles. Now we're ready to go ahead and put our rotor on and caliper on. All right, caliper's back on. If you are putting this kit on, one thing to really call out, because I was actually fighting with the caliper and I couldn't figure out what was going on, this bracket here needs to go a specific way. You'll see that this has a bend inward. If you have it flipped around, and this bends outward, this caliper will not go back on. So make sure you pay attention to that. Well, after four weeks of waiting, we finally got the tie rod sleeves in. So let me go ahead and show you what they look like and what the differences are, because there is quite a bit. Okay, so we have our original OEM clamps that actually just go over the threads and then you tighten up the bolts to hold them in place. Terrible. This thing is absolutely rusted shut. And then the new one is actually bolt-on sleeves that screw on. They are reverse threaded on the inner tie rod. Uh, these are by RideTech. CPP makes them. A couple other manufacturers make them. But much better design. You get your jam nut here. Tighten everything up based on the length and it's gonna look much, much nicer. So excited to finally get these on the truck and then get Harold back on the ground. All right, tie rods are on, sleeves are tightened up, everything's greased up, ready to get it back on the ground. We clear. And I am on this side. Not on this side, but one more. 
Do you want to do the honor? You can. You can. Work your beard magic. <laughs> My beard magic? I'm going to pull the uh, chalk out from over, over here. Oh, I can't. It's done. He's doing his job. All right, you clear? Yeah. Hello, where did he go? Damn! Get Z measuring tape! Bundling all of us. We are at 13 at the bottom and 18 at the top of the frame. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's going to roll nice. When we get it rolling. When we get it rolling. Very close. On to the next step. Ooh, wires, electrical, my favorite. Another episode, another learning adventure. <laughs> this one, this one definitely had its challenges, but love the freaking way that it looks. And now we get to move on to wiring and hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, Harold will be running again. Gotta work your beard magic on those wires. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope you enjoyed this episode and following along and all the fun and joy, quote unquote joy, that we've had with it. Uh, let us know your thoughts on the new stance, the new low. And as always, certainly appreciate you following along on the journey. Until next episode, take care, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.